So how is everyone today? <laughs> Got to greet the camera. Okay, so then, today's the 16th. So last time we were talking about rational functions, and we're still talking about rational functions. Uh, to remind you, of the general structure that we're dealing with is that we're dealing with functions. By the way, what's the definition of a rational function? What's the definition? Um, fx equals nx over dx, where n and d are positive. I agree. So it's a, it's, a, it's a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are both polynomials. So such a function is a rational function. So there's three, three features, three kinds of features that we want to keep track of. So there's one x value, so that's x is negative 3. Here's another x value. one, and here's another x value, x is four, and here's a y value, y is one. So none of these None of these dashed lines are part of the function I'm about to draw. They just help you sort of understand what the function is doing. So here's an example. Here's an example of what a rational function might look like. So the first thing that we dealt with about rational functions was this, uh, was this, this feature right here. So what's the name of this feature? Horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote. So this here is a horizontal asymptote of y is 1. Okay, and now today we need to deal with these other two features. So if this is a horizontal asymptote, well, what's this? A vertical. A vertical asymptote, right? Let's not branch out too much <laughs> in our names. So this is a vertical asymptote. And this function also has another vertical asymptote. Well, is this a vertical asymptote? This is a whole, right? So this is not a third vertical asymptote. This is even a different kind of thing, a whole. OK. So today we need to deal with the vertical asymptotes and holes. Okay. The reason why this is not a vertical asymptote is because the function does not become vertical <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. It just sort of passes through and then misses it. Okay. But I could ask a specific question. Supposing that this is the plot of function f, then I could ask something, li something like as x as x goes to um, <coughs> goes to negative three from the left blank and as x goes to negative 3 from the right, like. So how about it? Mm. 
So here's negative 3. So the question is, is that if you were following the red plot mm -hmm. and you were going to negative 3 and you were, and you were approaching from the left, what, where would you be going? Positive, positive infinity. infinity. So y is going to positive infinity. How about from the right? Also positive. Also positive infinity. That situation, the situation is different at 4, because from the left, you're going to negative infinity, whereas from the right, you're going to positive infinity. Okay, and then, interestingly, as x goes to 1 from the left blank, and as x goes to 1 from the right blank. So how about it? As you go to 1 from the left, where are you going? Negative 2. Negative two. Yeah, and from the right, it's also negative 2. But it's not defined there. So the fact that we're going to negative 2, but there is no definition there, means that this is a whole. Okay. <clears throat> so any question about this picture? So now we're going to start trying to figure out how, how we can come up with a classification scheme for for all these. Okay. <coughs> so for for example, let's consider the function f of x is x squared and let's compare that to the function g of x is x squared and then multiplied by x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, 2. So we did, a, we did an example quite similar to this last time and my question was is are these two functions the same function? So they're not. Why are these two functions not the same function? They're do yes, their natural domains are different f is defined at 2. You can plug in 2. If you were to do that, you would get 4. g, on the other hand, is not defined at 2. You can't plug in 2. Okay, because this would be 0 over 0, which is not defined. So this one can, has, is defined at 2, whereas this one is not. So if you were to plot this one, well, this one is the standard parabola which is a drawing that you were requested to memorize. So it looks more or less like that. Okay, so my question to you is, is then, well, if that's what F looks like, then what does G look like? Yes. So notably, what I'd like for you to observe is that if you plug in any value except 2, for example, if you were to plug in 10, well, if you plug in 10 here, this would be 100. And that one would be 100, because that'd be 100 and that'd be 8 over 8. So you plug in 10 here, you get 100. You plug in 10 here, you get 100. You plug in 1 here, you get 1. You plug in 1 here, you get 1. Plug in 0, you get 0. Plug in 0, you get 0. Plug in 30 here, you get 9,000. You plug in 30 here, you get 9,000. The only place where there's a distinct, where there's a difference in behavior, is at two. So at two, the behavior is is everywhere except at two. The behavior is identical, and then exactly at two, there's a hole. But otherwise, the behavior is identical. So the effect, you might say, the effect of multiplying by x minus 2 over x minus 2 was to delete that point. So I could, I could ask you a different question. I could say, well, supposing, supposing that I give you this one,
which is exactly like the standard parabola. with the exception that I've deleted that point. Then what is, then what, what rational function gives you this plot? x squared times x plus 3 over x plus 3. Exactly. So it's just like the standard parabola. And then I want to delete that one point. So I'll multiply by x plus 3 over x plus 3. OK. So you, in, in principle now, you could delete any point that you wanted, right? Or that you didn't want. So you could, if you wanted to be rid of point 8, Right, the, it, the point that would be at x is 8, you multiply by x minus 8 over x minus 8. It deletes that point okay, by modifying the domain. Okay. <coughs> okay, so now let's compare it to this one. So how about um, here is a plot that you were, here's, here's a function and it's one of the, one of the functions you were requested. Oh. Uh, pencil lead. Sorry. Uh, this is one of the functions you were requested to memorize. So what does its plot look like? Right. And the smaller the number, the larger in magnitude it is, right? So it does this. So it does, it's above the axis on the right side. How about on the left side? It's below. Why is it below the axis on the left side? Negative, right? So being, be being below the x-axis means that the output is negative. The output is negative on the left side because the input is negative. And 1 over x, when x is negative, is a negative value. OK. So. I have a question for you. Well, I want, to make an op I want to make an observation, and that is this vertical feature in the first place is a vertical asymptote. And what this sort of represents, in a sense, is you might say this is what happens when you get close to a division by zero. So this is sort of a visual representation of what division by zero might look like. OK, well, let's compare it to uh, a new function. What if I was to give you this expression and say 1 over x minus 2? Well, here, when we get close to x is 0, we're getting close to a division by 0. What, do, what value do we need to get close to for this expression so that we get close to a division by 0? Two. 2, right? Near 2, at 2, it's a division by 0. Near 2, we're getting close to a division by 0, you might say. So what's going to happen is that over here at x is 2, it's going to be just like this plot except it's going to be shifted over to the right because because that's where the division by 2 uh, division by 0 is occurring so something like this now <coughs> interesting 
So it's sort of you can you can grab hold of this asymptote and move it side to side. If you wanted an asymptote at eight, then you could do one over x minus eight. If you wanted an asymptote at negative ten, you could do one over x plus ten. And that would, you know, move it. Okay. Now, I'd like for you to observe and compare and contrast these two. So this one, the first one we dealt with, there is a division by zero there. Because at two, you're dividing by zero. But the result of dividing by zero, in this case, was a whole. Whereas the result of dividing by zero in this case was not a whole, it's a vertical asymptote. So the funny things happen when you divide by zero, right? Whole or vertical asymptote. Now my question to you is, is what's the distinction between these two, analytically? That one would be zero over zero, and that's one over zero. Okay, so this would, be, this would be zero over zero, and this would be one over zero. Okay, what if I was to, what if I was to compare it to this one? So now I'm being difficult. <laughs> so I'm going to make it just like, just like that one, so one over x minus two. And then now I'm going to multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2. So now how will this one look? And the answer is, well, so multiplying by x minus 2 over x minus 2, we observe that that, that deletes a point, right? Mm -hmm. But that point already wasn't there. So this actually has no effect, right? So <clears throat> so it still looks exactly the same. And, and you could write this as x minus 2 over x minus 2 squared, right? And these two are the same. So now, what's the distinction between, between these two or these, among these three? So what do you think? Well, sort of to make it kind of, kind of intuitive, I'll say it like this. Okay, both of these, a division by zero is occurring at two for both of them. Mm -hmm. But for this one in particular, it, it, it's sort of canceled by the x minus two that's in the numerator, right? Whereas here, a division by zero is occurring at two, but there's nothing in its numerator to cancel it. Right? So it sort of can't be undone. And so as a result, you get this you know, crazy behavior there, this vertical asymptote. So this one, in a sense, this is causing a division by zero, but that one's sort of fixing it, you might say. But it can't fix it exactly at the place, so it's still a hole. So now let's try and make it really precise. So that's sort of an intuitive way to kind of think about it, but now let's make it precise. <coughs> so remember, a rational function is a ratio of two polynomials. And polynomials have zeros, right? Places where you plug them in and you get zero. And furthermore, zeros have multiplicity in, in a polynomial. So I have a question. For the denominator, what is the multiplicity of two in the denominator? So two, 2 is a 0, and it appears twice. twice. So the multiplicity of 2 in the denominator is 2. 
What is the multiplicity of 2 in the numerator? 1. For this one, what is the multiplicity of 2 in the denominator? 1. Mm -hmm. And what is the multiplicity of 2 in the numerator? 0. zero. It appears 0 times. N not, not quite, almost. What is the multiplicity of 2 in the denominator? What is the multiplicity of 2 in the numerator? Mm -hmm. 1. So in the end, what we're going to do is we have to do a counting game to figure out whether or not a point is a whole or a vertical asymptote. It's a, it's a counting game comparing the relative multiplicities of numerator and denominator. So here, the multiplicity in the denominator is greater than the multiplicity in the numerator. Therefore, this is a vertical asymptote. 2 is greater than 1, so it's going to be a vertical asymptote. 1 is greater than 0, so it's a vertical asymptote. 1 is the same as 1, so it's going to be a whole. Okay, so let's write down the, the analytic test now. So this is the classification. of points in rational functions. So let n of x over d of x be a rational function. So the first question is, if, uh, and I, so let n of x over d of x be a rational function, and let x equal to c be a real number. If the multiplicity of x is equal to c in the denominator is 0, <coughs> then sort of colloquially or intuitively that means that this is not a division by 0. Okay. Then <coughs> x equal to c is a regular point. So, for example, visually, what a regular point might look like is here's the standard parabola. Every one of those points is regular. So, every one of them, regular points. <coughs> Otherwise, That is to say, the multiplicity of x equal to c in the denominator is not 0. Well, intuitively, that means that, OK, we are actually at a division by 0. So something weird is happening. Well, what are the two weird, weird things that could happen? A whole or an asymptote. That's what it must be. Now we, need to, now we need to be able to decide, well, which one is it? Otherwise, if the multiplicity of x equal to c in the denominator is greater than the multiplicity of x equal to c in the numerator, then uh, 
So if it's greater than the denominator, then x equal to c is a vertical asymptote. So that is to say something that would look like this. And then otherwise, x equal to c is a whole. So there's exactly three possibilities. So an example of what a whole might look like. Three possibilities, regular point, vertical asymptote, or whole. Okay, so we haven't done any examples. We're going to do several examples in a moment. But before I get to the examples, which I think will really clear up any questions you might have, are there any questions about specifically what's written here? For example, use a crazy function. So x minus 1 squared multiplied by x minus 2 to 7 multiplied by x minus 3 to 5, and then divided by <coughs> x minus 1 to 9, x minus 2 to 3, x minus 4 to 10. Why not? Crazy function. OK. So my first question, the point x equal to 1. Is it a regular point? Is it a vertical asymptote? Or is it a hole? It's a vertical asymptote. Now, how do you come to this conclusion? Yes, so in the first place, we can, we can cross one of these off the list immediately. It cannot possibly be regular. Why can it, why is, why is that, in, in the first place, that's the first question. Mm -hmm. okay. So why is it definitely not regular? Right, because at one, you're dividing by zero. So it's definitely not regular. It's definitely not regular. So if it's definitely not regular, then, then the question becomes, okay, in what way is it irregular? Is it a vertical asymptote or is it a whole? So the way you address this question is you say, well, what is the multiplicity of 1 in the denominator? So what is its multiplicity? Nine. It's 9. It's 9 because the factor x minus 1 occurs 9 times. So its multiplicity is 9. What is the multiplicity of 1 in the numerator? Two. It's 2. And so if you're good at just memorizing things, flowcharts and things like that, you know from the previous page that this indicates that it is a vertical asymptote. Now, sort of conceptually, conceptually, you might say, okay, 
I can see that there's some cancellation that would occur. Now the question is, is that after the cancellation occurs, if you were to go ahead and do that cancellation, would there be any x minus ones left over in the denominator? Yeah. yeah. And there'd be nothing to cancel it, it, that behavior in the numerator. As a result, there will be a vertical asymptote at one because there's too many of them down here. These two can't overcome these nine. Okay, let's continue. How about x equal to two? Is it regular? Re regular? or a vertical asymptote, or a hole. So in the first place, I claim that we can, we can cross one of these off the list immediately. What can be crossed off the list immediately? Regular. regular. It is most certainly not regular. Why is it most certainly not regular? Because it's a division by zero. That's a place where there's a division by zero. So it is most certainly not regular. Okay, now the question becomes is, okay, if it's not regular, then in what manner is it irregular? So the multiplicity of two in the denominator is what? Is three. And then the multiplicity of two in the numerator is what? Seven. And if you're good at memorizing flow charts, <laughs> like on the previous page, then what is the conclusion? It's a whole. Or, alternatively, from an intuitive point of view, let's consider, do you observe that there could be a cancellation? If you were to go ahead and make that cancellation, if you were to do it, would there be any x minus 2's left in the denominator? No. no. All the ones that are in the denominator would be canceled away. So that means that you're not going to have a vertical asymptote there. But you can't, it's not regular because you're dividing by 0 there. So this is a whole. Okay. How about x equal to 3. Is it regular? Vertical asymptote or a hole? It's regular. Why is it regular? Well, it's, it's not that. Yeah, it's, there's, there's, it's not a division by 0 at all. Which is to say, what is the multiplicity of 3 in the denominator? It's 0. How many times does, does x minus 3 appear in the denominator? Zero. 0 times. So it's regular. It, it does mean that 3 is a 0 of, of the rational function, yes. And for, how about the point x equal to 4? Is it regular, a vertical asymptote, or a hole? It's a vertical asymptote. So the reason is because, well, let's consider. Always the first question is, what is the multiplicity of that point in the denominator? So what is its multiplicity in the denominator? 10. So that means we can immediately cross what off the list? It's definitely not regular. Because the fact that it has a non-zero multiplicity means that we're dividing by zero. So it's definitely not regular. Now the question is, is we need to consider in what way is it irregular? Is it a whole or is it a vertical asymptote? Okay. To address that question, we need to ask, well, what is the multiplicity of four in the numerator? Well, what is it? Zero, right? How many times does x minus 4 appear in the numerator? Zero times. Zero times. So it's not in there. And so what is the result? Vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. <coughs> Very good. Any question about this? 
<clears throat> so now I could give you, you know, an easier function, uh, or, you know, just something different anyway. I could say, okay, how about g of x is, um, say, uh, I don't know, x over x times x plus 5. So now my instructions are different. Find all holes and vertical asymptotes. So I want you to tell me every point that's a hole and say, here's all the holes and here's all the vertical asymptotes. give you just a moment to think about that. Zero is a hole. And there's a vertical asymptote at negative five. In a sense, you can say, well, OK, at zero, there's a problem, because we're dividing by zero. So that's going to be, that's a hole or a vertical asymptote. Uh, and it's a hole because it's because it's offset by this this x appearing in the numerator. Here at negative five is also where a division by zero occurs. Does does anything cancel it in the numerator? Ah, uh, so its behavior is going to be crazy. It's going to be an asymptote. So. OK, so now we need to combine the two things that we love the most. <laughs> OK, because this, this, is, this is one of them, right? The, class of <laughs> the, the reckoning of rational functions and holes and vertical asymptotes and things like that. And then the thing that's missing is sign charts and plotting. Let's do it. <laughs> so exciting. OK, so how about let's consider the following function. f of x is x minus 1, um, let's say, cubed multiplied by x uh, minus 3 multiplied by, OK, so let's think. The denominator, I want there to be an x minus 1. That's probably enough. Let's let's not let's not kill ourselves. Okay. <clears throat> so, my request of you, my first request, is to make a sign chart. Of this function, that is to say, I want to know all of the intervals where this function is positive, and also all of the intervals where this function is negative, and I want you to make a chart for me of where all of this occurs. So what is the first step in the construction of a sign chart? Find zero. Nope. Uh, find, the natural domain. find the natural domain. So what is the natural domain? Anything but one. OK, yeah, I need something else here. So I'm going I'm to put uh, x minus 6. Anything but one and 6. OK, now it's anything but 1 and 6. Notably, notably, I'd like for you to observe that, the, that if we were doing the rational function question, these would be the places that we would need to classify as being holes or vertical asymptotes. Okay. Each, because these are, the, these are not in the na natural domain because they're divisions by zero. So e each of these is either a hole or a vertical asymptote, and we're going to consider that in a moment. So what's the second step in the construction of a sign chart? Zero. Nearly. Zero it's zero and simplify. So on this particular exercise, I gave it to you already 
uh, already factored. So there's nothing to do. But a more interesting version of this exercise is I could give you a rational function where I multiply out the numerator and also the denominator, and then you have to factor it, right, using the rational zeros theorem and a bunch of synthetic division. Wouldn't that be terrific, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so then zero and simplify. Then now, <laughs> what's the next step? Nope. Yeah, now we, need, now we need to find the zeros. <clears throat> so now we need to solve. f of x is equal to 0. That is to say we need to solve x minus 1 cubed uh, times x minus 3 over x minus 1 times x minus 6 is equal to 0. So we need to solve this. OK, so in the first place, we can multiply both sides by the denominator of the left-hand side. Or alternatively, we could just note that in order for this fraction to be 0, it must be the case that the numerator is 0. Right? Because if the fraction is 0, if a over b is 0, it must be the case that a is 0. OK. So now we have the product of things is 0. So this says, what are the zeros? OK, almost. Thank you. So, so this sort of says weakly that x is 1 or x is 3, but in fact, x equal to 3 is the only solution. And why is, why is x equal to 3 the only solution? Because 1's not in the domain. It's just not in there. So it's not, it's not possible to be part of the solution. OK. <clears throat> so now, these three steps, the purpose of these three steps is to collect fence posts that go in the sign chart. Here's two fence posts, and here's another. So we found three fence posts. <clears throat> so I'm going to do the chart up here. Okay. So we found three fence posts. So there's four regions. So one and six, so this is one, three, Six. I'm going to draw this one open because I'm remembering that that's not part of the domain, not part of the domain, and yes, this is part of the domain. Okay, so now what's a test point in each region? Okay, zero, two, four, or five would be fine, and how about seven? Okay, so now. Where, what are we going to plug each of these test points into? Into that, right? OK. OK. So if we plug in 0, OK, that would be negative 1. So that would be negative. And then we'd cube it cube that, and then we'd plug in 0 to there. That'd be negative 3, so that would be negative. And then divide by 0 minus negative 1, that would be negative. Or 0 minus 1 would be negative, I mean to say. And then 0 minus 6, that would be negative. So is there any question why in the leftmost region that's the sign pattern? OK, now just fill out the chart. OK. <clears throat> so if you plug in 2, that would be positive in the top left, cubed. In the top right, that would be negative. 
In the bottom left, that would be positive. And in the bottom right, that would be negative. Now for 4, that would be positive cubed in the top left, positive in the top right, positive in the bottom left, and negative in the bottom right. And then finally, positive cubed in the top left, positive in the top right, positive in the bottom left, positive in the bottom right. So any question about determining these sign patterns? Why did you choose four? Because that's between three and six. Could you have done three? Five would be just fine. Five you could have used you could have used four point three one two. That would that also would have been fine. Any number between these is fine. Okay, so then the overall the overall SIGN. So how many negatives do we have here? Three, four, five, six of them, right? So six negatives, all in product or quotient. So what's the overall sign? Positive. Positive. Now how many negatives do we have? Two. two. <coughs> so the product of two negatives is still positive. Now how many negatives do we have? One. Just one, so that's negative. And how many, now how many negatives do we have? Zero. Zero of them, so this is all positive. Okay, so any question about making the chart? Okay, now I have a different question for you. <coughs> I want you to, I want you to uh, find all poles and vertical asymptotes. I disagree. So in the first place, at 3, it couldn't be a whole or a vertical asymptote because that's part of the domain, right? So 3's three's, three's good. Three, 3, in fact, is a 0. So what are the candidates for holes and vertical asymptotes? 1 and 6, right? That's where problems are occurring, right? For this function, evaluating at 1 is a no-no. Because you have because it's division by zero there, and evaluating at six is a no no because you're dividing by zero there. Six is the vertical axis. I agree. So x is one. Here's a division by zero. So it's a whole or a vertical asymptote. And if you were to go ahead and perform that cancellation, if you were to do it, were, would there be any x minus ones left in the denominator? No, they'd be all gone. So this is a whole. And then x equal to 6. That's a division by 0. And if you, if you cancel, if you make all the possible x minus 6 cancellations, will there be any left in the denominator? Yes. So this is a vertical asymptote. So from that reckoning, we know that this one is, in fact, a whole. And this one is a vertical asymptote. So we know, we know what's a hole. We know what's a vertical asymptote. And so we don't have enough time for it now, but if we did, this is what I would do. The next question would be to find all uh, horizontal asymptotes. And there is a horizontal asymptote of y is 1. So verify that in your own time. And then sketch this. So draw it. What does it actually look like? By the way, so this is a vertical asymptote. So that means that there's up and crazy up and down behavior here. So this behavior right here, how would this look? So would it be, would it be you know, like this, like that, and like that? Why not like that? Right, it has to match the sign chart. So the left side has to be going down because it's negative. And the right side has to be going up because it's positive. Okay, have a nice Wednesday.
I'll be in my office until about 3.20. I'll, I'll accept them, but you can leave. Um, and I looked in the grade book for, that's where the exam information should be, right? Is that right. what you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is it up there? Did it I is. Just want to see it? Okay. It's at the bottom. At the bottom. You'll see grades that look like, huh? that are named like EX underscore zero one one underscore zero one. And that's the room number? Or is it? It's near the room. No. So, yeah. so, you, so what I'm saying yeah. is that you'll see grades that look like this. Their names, their names look like this. EX underscore zero two underscore zero three. This is if you redid quiz two, question three. So you you selected up to six. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a bunch of exam, a bunch of gradebook grades. Mm -hmm. And if you did quiz two, question three, then you will have a grade for this one. Oh, but for the next exam. Do I thought ah. we have on Saturday? Is that what you said? December the 10th. Oh, okay. Oh, you want to know when it is? I thought we had an exam this Saturday. No. Okay, good. That's <laughs> well, great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't. Okay, perfect. Do you think they have more questions I didn't understand? I'd be glad to, but like, I have to. Office. Yeah, yeah. I'm, as, as soon as I pick up all my stuff, I'm going to my office. You're welcome to follow me. Thank you.